Hey guys, it's Nick, and I'm in Midtown Manhattan on 7th Avenue between 52nd and 53rd. Behind me, you could probably see the lights of Times Square down there. And everybody knows that real estate is expensive in Manhattan, especially Midtown. What if I told you I knew where you can buy a place right on this block for only $200,000? It's a pretty good deal, right? Except there's one catch. To get that deal for $200,000 for one apartment, you kind of have to buy it in bulk. And what that means is you have to buy 1,780 apartments in this 51-story Sheraton Hotel. So yeah, this hotel just sold for approximately $200,000 per apartment or about $356 million. And it was originally bought in 2006 for $738 million. So what the hell went wrong? Let's take a look at some of the numbers. So this hotel was bought by Host REIT, a real estate investment trust back in 2006. And they paid approximately $400,000 per apartment for it. And this is the third largest hotel by the number of rooms in New York City. So why did they take such a big hit on the selling price? A few reasons. Number one, obviously, is the pandemic. Another reason is that this is an older hotel and has union staff. So that may increase the expenses of running this place. But the average hotel per room being sold in New York right now is about $250,000 per unit. And that is down from about $750,000 a unit at its peak around 2015, 2016. And part of the reason for that is back then, a lot of foreigners and institutional investors were investing in New York City hotels. With the pandemic, a lot of them left the institutional investors uh, uh, like multifamily and industrial more now than uh, hotels, I guess. And the international investors, I guess they figured out a better place to put their money so they're not interested in overpaying for hotels in New York City anymore. Now the average occupancy in 2021 in Midtown hotels was 44%, and that is up from 35.7% in 2020 but it's still below the 88.1% occupancy in 2019. And so their average room is $233, which is up 25% over 2020, but still below by about $53 a night on average per room during 2019. So their revenue per room is about $105 in 2021, and that's less than half of the $252 on average revenue per room in 2019. So this hotel was bought by MCR, which is, I've seen it described as the spirit airlines of the hotel industry. They try to operate cheaply and charge you more for all extras like the gym or the pool or things like that. MCR also owns the TWA Hotel in JFK Airport and they own around 20,000 rooms in 84 different cities and they are the fourth largest hotel owner. Funny enough, MCR was founded in 2006, the same year that Host Hotels paid $738 million for this place. So maybe uh, they saw this purchase and said, let's start up a fund to buy hotels because in 16 years, we're gonna buy this place for $400 million cheaper than it was originally sold for, who knows? So there's a lot of reasons for the low price of this hotel. One is obviously the pandemic. Another one is a big increase in hotel rooms available in New York City. It was about 85,000 a few years ago. Now it's 125,000. And you also have Airbnb, obviously. And the biggest spenders on hotels and tourism are usually international travelers and business travelers and they have not really come back very much yet. So those travelers in 2019 there was 13.5 million of them in 2020 only 2.4 million 
and now it's come back a little bit to 4.6 million, but it's nowhere near the levels of 2019. So why did MCR buy this? Most likely because at, at some price, everything is worth it, right? Even if they have much lower occupancy, if they're paying $400 million less, they can still make money. And I guess it's a bet that tourism will eventually come back. And so they will make a good profit on this hotel when they sell it or if they choose to hold it and just get the revenue from it. A few monkey wrenches that can mess up those plans though are one, obviously the war in Ukraine and the gas prices and fuel prices for planes that <laughs> these new high prices are pushing through the economy and so people may have less money to travel to places like New York. Maybe they'll take shorter <laughs> vacations and not spend as much. So that is definitely an issue going forward even though it looks like the whole pandemic thing is winding down. There are also still restrictions for international travelers that are not U.S. citizens that need a vaccine to come into the country. So that could also be a deterrent. Although in New York City, they did get rid of the vaccine passports for restaurants and things like that. So at least that is gone. So guys, I guess that shows that there is no such thing as a can't lose investment, even buying real estate in the middle of Manhattan. If you pay too much when everybody else wants it, you might be paying too much. And find later on, 16 years later, while the S&P has been going through the roof, their investment has been going through the floor and they lost 400 million and MCR scooped it up at a much better price and will probably reap the benefits when the tourism returns. Where are they going? Sheraton? No, I don't think so. I don't know. Maybe they are. They're stopped over there at the Sheraton, it looks like. Well, they got some package deal at the Sheraton, who knows? So already MCR is making their money back, it looks like, if this whole crowd from Ohio is staying here. I hope you like this video, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.